I am going to speak on Holy Mother. At Vishnupur, that is our hometown, that is my hometown at the time, she was staying in an inn on the porch. And we, two of us, two friends, were going out for a walk and our, I was only then 14 or 15 years old, and there was Radhu, her niece, uh, holding one of the pillars. Then we saw a holy man seated, and around him there were, surrounded by him, there were many women seated there. So as both of us were going for a walk, we criticized this holy man. Look at the holy man surrounded by women. And as a result, what happened to me, see? <laughs> <laughs> then we came back from our walk. It was a little dark. And this young man was to go in one direction to his own home, and I was to go in another direction to my home. But something drew me back, and I, I bowed down to this holy man, and he says, he said, Will you see Holy Mother? I got excited. I said, Holy Mother, you mean Paramahamsa's wife? Yes. Then she was right there. And so I touched her toes. You see, we do that with our fingers. And she kissed me like a like our mother's kiss, uh, take the fingers in our, our fingers here on the chin, and then she puts it on her lips. And then she said, Son, haven't I seen you before? I said, No, mother, I have not seen you. But of course, Mothers recognize uh, their children, but children, unfortunately, do not recognize the mother, who is the mother of the universe. While, I, while she would be coming to Calcutta, uh, once a week they would allow men to come and touch the toes of her toe, touch her toes. And she would remain veiled. And so I used to go and touch the toes. And I used to go because I'd get wonderful sensation, like an electric shock every time I touched. And then later I learned that that way she transmitted spiritual power. But I didn't know, but just for that sensation, because afterwards I'd feel a soothing influence in my whole body. And she used to come and live in Calcutta for six months, as a general rule, and then go to go back to Jairambati for six months. One time, another friend of mine, I used to call him Paresh. Paresh and I together came to Vishnupur, in our home we stayed, and then 
we hire a bullock cart. And then in the morning, or it was rather late that we arrived, and she told her attendant, Rash Bihari, and from him we learned that Holy Mother told him that two of Rakal's sons are coming. Keep some food, save some food for them. We did not write to her anything, not there was any telephone, but she knew. And then, like a mother, she served us food on a leaf, on leaf plates. And she sat by us and asked us if we like this food, just as our mother does. If we like this, then she would give more. So that way she fed us. And I remember, still now, that I have never eaten such food in my life. It was like nectar. I still remember that. When we left her, she stood by the door and kissed us. And as far as we could, she could see, she kept on looking at us. This was the custom that she had with everybody that used to go to her. While we were students in Calcutta, uh, they gave word to us that Mother will be coming to Belun Mott and they need volunteers. So many of our college boys went and we stood in rows at the Belun Mott and then Holy Mother was carried in palanquin up to the gate and then they had a chair prepared for her and Four disciples of Sri Ramakrishna, Maharaj Swami Brahmananda, Swami Saradananda, Swami Premananda, and Swami Shivananda, they carried her. And then uh, Maharaj gave order that nobody should bow down before Maharaj at the, before Mother at that time. But we saw Khoka Maharaj, Swami Subhadananda, he just rolled on the ground. <laughs> and then Maharaj said, Who is that? Who is that? <laughs> then of course Khoka Maharaj in the meantime disappeared. And so she was carried by these four Swamis, upstairs to the shrine room, and of course, I believe, she was worshipped at that time by these disciples. One thing I know, that while she was living, she was worshipped by hundreds and thousands of people as a living goddess. Then another very interesting story I know. I don't know if these are published at all. I have no idea. Uh, in the Udbodhan office, while Ma Holy Mother was there, you see there was a place downstairs that was the Udbodhan office, and upstairs was the place for Holy Mother. There was a bedstead, and then on the other side of the bedstead, uh, there, was, there was a shrine. And she stayed uh, in, this, in the shrine uh, during that time. Now I'll tell you how Swamiji Maharaj 
and Swami Yogananda, who was her attendant, how they would touch her feet. Swamiji would dip himself in the Ganges six, seven times. She, he thought he was not pure enough to touch her feet. And Maharaj would go and just like a little boy had, has done something wrong and afraid to approach mother. And so he would compose himself first. Hello, Radhi, how are you? And then would go and bow down to mother and would try to come away. Then, but ma- mother would say, Rakhal, sit down. <laughs> And Swami Yogananda was her attendant. He would not even touch her feet. Where she would stand, there she would take the dust after she left. You tenderly embraced those who sought your love With soothing voice you spoke to those who came near for comfort's sake You welcomed all with open arms and made them your very own And never turned away a weary soul What a blessing to have seen your face. What a blessing to receive your grace. If only we had known you, Holy Mother. Only 